Good morning, ladies. Welcome to the Whitaker Women Way. It's 9.03. Can you believe it? I'm on early. Well, for me, early. Um, I actually could have been on at 9 o'clock, but I had a few technical difficulties with the tripod and accidentally starting the live before it was, like, hitting my finger on the button. Anyways, whatever. We had to restart. So here we are. Whitaker Women Way. It is um, Tuesday. Yes, it is Tuesday today. I'm glad you guys are here with us for our daily devotional. If you've missed um, any devotions, I encourage you to just scroll back and pick one and listen to it. I would love for you to share these also with other ladies in your life that could use some encouragement or uh, maybe some help understanding the Bible. My desire is um, for just people to get inspired, encouraged, and excited about God's Word. It is a form of discipleship. Um, having this Bible study time together, so I would love for the message to get out there. So if you don't mind, um, just share share these videos or the page with your friends and family as well, and I thank you for that. All right, so today's verse is from the book of Romans, chapter 1, and it's verse 16. And again, when I see these verses and I'm like, oh, this will be an easy one, it'll be a short daily devotional, and then I start like unpacking it, and I'm like, nope, probably not going to be a short one. So Today's verse, again, seems kind of simple, but we really, there's a lot of meaning in just these words. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So, of course, the first line really jumps out of us, out at us, right? For I am not ashamed of... Somebody was trying to call me. It said potential spam. We don't need that today. Not today, Satan, right? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Maybe I should have answered to talk to them. Oh, missed opportunity, right? All right. So the word ashamed, um, I have three different definitions for it. Um, can mean reluctant to do something through fear of embarrassment or humiliation. Embarrassed or guilty because of one's actions, characteristics, or association. Or feeling shame, guilt, or disgrace. So um, I'm going to kind of read off my notes here because I want to make sure I cover all of these that um, the Holy Spirit kind of inspired me as I looked at the word ashamed here. Uh, first, fear. Do you have the fear of sharing the gospel? That is a natural fear for Christians to share the gospel um, maybe you're embarrassed of not knowing the right answers. These are very common things in believers. A lot of reasons why we don't share the gospel is we feel we don't know enough. People will ask us questions and we won't know the answer to them. We feel um, like we don't have enough education, like maybe that's the preacher's job, right? He's gone to college for this. That's, that's his job. I, I didn't go to school for that. So, you know, I, I don't know how to talk about that. What if they um, don't like what I have to say? What if they make fun of me for what I have to say, right? These are things that, that are natural as believers. That's the human fleshly side of us to be ashamed of this because we have this fear. It says a, a reluctant to do something through fear of embarrassment or humiliation. So, so we have this fear that we're not going to have the right answers. We have this embarrassment that we're not going to know what to say. We feel like we're going to be humiliated or talked down to by people that we look up to or to our peers. Sometimes in the workplace, you don't want to talk about the gospel or talk about your faith or what Jesus has done for you because um, you look up to these people. They're your peers or they're people that you strive to be like. They're higher educated than you, whatever the case may be. We kind of feel this humiliation to the gospel because we feel like um, they're going to either talk down to us because they know more than us, or they're going to look down upon us, think that we're petty, that we need um, God. We need faith in God to make it through our day because we can't do it on our own. But deep down, we know better than that, right? Because we know we can't do it on our own. We do need God. It's not petty. That is strength in knowing that we need God above all else. That, that That's what makes us strong. It doesn't make us weak, but that's not how the world sees it. And so we have this fear of embarrassment, this fear of humiliation, that um, the way others are going to look at us, the way others are going to talk to us, the questions that they might ask us that we don't know the answer to. And so we have this um, act of being ashamed of the gospel, what uh, Paul is talking about here. And then it also says that you can be embarrassed or feel guilty because of one's actions, characteristics, or association. 
I also see this a lot of times with Christians. We feel guilty because of other Christians' actions, or um, we feel guilty because of the characteristics that others have that they're saying are Christian characteristics and they're not, or we feel um, guilty from association with these people who have made a bad representation of Christ. There's a fear there that when you go up to somebody and you say, I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus, I'm a Christian, that they have in their mind already an idea of what a Christian is because they've had a bad experience with somebody. And so we are ashamed of the gospel in a sense of association. We're ashamed of it being associated with those people who made a bad example that showed the bad characteristics that aren't even in the Bible, but they associated it with Christ or their actions. They were embarrassed because of other people's actions and they said they did it in the name of Christ and that's not really following the Bible. And so we act ashamed of the gospel because of the association, actions, and characteristics of someone else. Or maybe we feel disgraced and shame because of these things. You know, we feel like, you know, maybe I shouldn't say anything because they already have this bad idea and you know what, I'm not perfect either. They're gonna see those flaws in me. My characteristics aren't the characteristics of Christ. My actions aren't always the actions of Christ. My, my association to the world is not that that Christ would have for me. And so we're ashamed to share the gospel because we're afraid what others might see in us. They might think we're a hypocrite. You know, a lot of Christians are afraid of looking like a hypocrite. Guess what? We're all human. We're all sinners. We're all flawed. We're all working towards being more like Christ, but we're never going to fully be like Christ, right? It's okay if the world thinks you're a hypocrite. You're a work in progress. I am a work in progress. But we are ashamed of sharing the gospel because we're afraid of what people might see in us, right? And so it causes, it causes more shame on ourselves that we don't share the gospel because we're ashamed of how we look when we share the gospel, right? It's a vicious cycle. So many things are in this life, isn't it? And so it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. So Paul is saying he's not ashamed of the gospel. That's how we're supposed to feel, not ashamed of the gospel. And there are ways that we can work through this, okay? There are ways that we can work past the fear of not knowing the answer, the fear of being looked down upon or that people are going to see our actions and our characteristics and they're going to say that's not Christ the way you're acting right now or the way you said that was not what I would think Christ would be. Here's the first thing I want to tell you. These people have not read the Bible. They do not have the Holy Spirit in them to help them discern. Yes, we are still flawed and we still sin even with the Holy Spirit in us but we have a greater understanding. They haven't come to that knowledge yet. To them, the message of the cross is still foolish. They don't understand it. And so they might look down upon us and think that we're weak, needing God. They say, Christianity is a crutch. It's not a crutch. It healed me. I do not need a crutch because I do not limp any longer. I am fully healed of my sin, right? But that's not how the world sees it. So remember, when you're going to talk to somebody, you don't need to be ashamed of the gospel. You need to, to be strengthened by the gospel. It says, um, for it is the power of God. That's the second line there. It is the power of God. God can strengthen us to share the gospel. We just have to get out of our own way. We have to realize that what God has done in us is far greater than anything that this world can do for us. What he thinks about us matters more than anything that our peers Think about us. We might be ashamed of our personal actions or the actions of other believers, but we do not need to be ashamed of the gospel. The work of Jesus Christ is nothing to be ashamed of. We might be ashamed of our own personal life, but not the gospel. We need to step forth in strength and in humility and say, yeah, I am a screwed up person, you know? I didn't do that right. I didn't say that right. I'm still working on this, but it's not me that you're following. It's not me that you need to listen to. It's, it's Jesus. It's the gospel. The gospel is not our words or actions. I didn't write the gospel. The way I act is not the gospel. No, it's God's words and the actions of Jesus. That's the gospel. And 
I kind of came up with this thing I've been working on and I have not typed it out. You know, that would have been a good thing to do during this time of being at home to work on that, but nope, I didn't do that. You know, it happens. So I've been working on this list as things come to me um, about kind of human nature and evangelism that every answer, we know this, every answer to life's problems is in the Bible. Everyone desires, everybody has a different passion, whether it's animal activist, political, um, environmental, um, the, the, everybody has something different, but it's all in the Bible. And we can point back to the life of Jesus through people's desires, like an animal activist. They love animals. They, they wish animals were treated better, you know, all, all this stuff. Well, we can point back to the time that animals were a part of everything. It was all whole. There was no death. The animals didn't attack each other. They didn't eat each other. Humans didn't eat them. You know, we can point back to the garden and then we can show them, look, God loves these animals too. He created them. He provided for them. But then we sinned and everything became cursed. Everything was fallen. You are a sinner. The, the, the cruelty that's happening to animals is because of the curse. And then you can lead into the gospel and tell them about, but Jesus came and died on the cross for you so you could be made new. And one day he's going to come back and the whole world is going to be made new and we'll be back in harmony with the animals just as it was in the Garden of Eden. You can find almost anybody's soft point, their thing, their reason why they don't like God. And we can show them, no, that's not true. The thing is they don't know scripture. They haven't read it for themselves. They've heard what somebody else said. We can contradict that, but we have to be knowledgeable ourselves. So we have to read the scripture for ourselves. We have to be seeking God for ourselves to be able to share that with somebody else. And if you don't know the answer, don't be scared. This is, I heard, read this in a book. Um, was it Mark Cahill's book, um, One Thing You Can't Do in Heaven? Great book on evangelism. He says, um, if you don't know the answer, that's okay. Say, and I mean, this was years ago, so now you could just say, you know, like, can I get your Instagram account or Facebook account or whatever. But he said, can I get your email address? Which people still email, so you could ask for that. Can I get your email address? Because I would like to know the answer to that too. I don't know it, but I'm going to find out because I would like to know also. And then I'm going to email it to you. So even, you don't have to be scared that you don't know the answer. You can say, I know somebody who knows the answer, whether it's your pastor or you know a website that you can reference. I love using um, Answers in Genesis. Um, they have lots of great um, tools there as well. Um, just say, you know what, I don't know the answer. Um, I'm still learning too. I would love to know the answer to that. I'm going to get back to you. Okay, I'm going to go home and research it. I'm going to find out. I'm going to get back to you. So don't be scared that you don't know the answer. You don't have to know the answer. That's okay, right? But we still have to make the effort. So everybody has something that they're passionate about that we can point back to Jesus. Women's activists, they say, oh, I can't be a Christian. They're against women. Really? Because before Jesus, women were second class citizens. He was the one who brought women to the forefront. He put them back in their rightful place. And again, we can take this back all the way back to the fall where Adam and Eve sinned. And part of the curse is that a woman would have that burning desire for her husband, not in a sexual way, but to have his role. We can take it all the way back to the curse. We can point people to the gospel of Jesus Christ, why we act this way, why people think this way, but why we need Jesus. We can take it all the way back there. Any aspect of life can be taken back there. So I've been making this whole list, even um, suicide and different things like that. We can point this out through scripture, why they need Jesus. We don't have to be ashamed of the gospel. We have to be knowledgeable about the gospel. We have to sit and think on these things. God will bring them to your mind, but you can also sit there and meditate on these thoughts. How can I share the gospel with so-and-so? You know, they're, they're really um, politically different than I am, and I just don't think I can share the gospel with them. Sit and think on it. Pray on it. Meditate on it. Ask God for scriptures to help you with this. He will show you a way to bridge the gap between you guys politically to where you can show them the gospel without offending them. We don't have to be ashamed of the gospel. 
because we have all the tools. We have more tools now than ever before in being able to learn about the gospel and we can share it with others. One of the um, great tools that is out there um, that we use at Destination Church is called The Story. Um, it's a little booklet. You can order them online or you can download the app on your phone. It's called The Story app. And it is a great way. It's like a little picture book. You can hand your phone to the person and say, just read this. And it goes through the story of the fall and um, all the way through redemption. And so you see the great picture of God's story. It's a great way to share the gospel with people from the very beginning because you know what? Um, a lot of people nowadays who were not raised in church, if you start sharing the gospel at Jesus died on the cross for you, for your sins, they may not know why they're a sinner. They may not even realize that they are a sinner. You have to go back to the beginning. They have to realize when sin came into this world and why things are the way they are today and why Jesus dying on the cross 2,000 years ago was our salvation, right? So just starting at Jesus dying on the cross for you, they may not understand because they've never heard the whole story before. And so we can share the story with them. The story app is a great way. There's tons of other apps out there. I had another one on my phone that um, I deleted last year to make room for something else. I, I can't remember what it was called though. I was trying to think about that. There's other apps that will help you be able to share the gospel if you get nervous and tongue-tied. I get tongue-tied sometimes. Um, you can use tools like that, little things that you can just kind of keep in your pocket for your own reference while you're sharing the gospel so you can share the whole story. And then it's very important to tell your story. Don't be ashamed of what God has done for you personally. We don't need to be ashamed of the gospel. We don't need to be ashamed of the work that Christ has done in you. I don't need to be ashamed of the work that Christ has done in me. I don't need to be ashamed of the work that he still needs to do, right? We need to share that with boldness. Let people know that God is still at work. He is still making things new. It didn't stop. That this is still going on. So don't be ashamed to share your story either. It says, for it is the power of God. So we need to speak with authority and joy. There are so many believers that do not speak with joy and it makes people think, I don't want to be a believer. Well, I don't want to be like that person. I'm, I'm happier not having God in my life. If that's what having God looks like, I don't want it. Or maybe we, we speak so timid and unsure of ourselves that they say, well, they don't even really believe what they're saying. Why should I believe what they're saying? We need to speak with authority. We need to speak with joy. And this comes from God. The speaking with authority, it comes from God. Jesus said, all authority has been given to me. We do it because of Jesus Christ. It's not of ourselves. It's not anything that I have done or that I have as a personality trait that helps me speak with authority and speak with choice because I know what Jesus Christ has done for me. I know what he did on the cross. And so I can speak with that authority even if I don't know all the answers. Even if I'm talking to somebody who is much highly educated, higher up than me, I can still speak with that authority to them because it comes from Jesus Christ, right? So why... Do we do this? It all comes down to this line, right? I hope you guys are still with me. I know that was a lot on being ashamed and on the gospel. But why do we do this? And the passage today tells us for salvation to everyone who believes. The reason why we should not be ashamed of the gospel, why we should be sharing his story and our story, is so that others may come to salvation that they may believe in Jesus Christ, that they may put their faith in him. They'll turn from the world, turn from their own wicked ways, and they will have salvation. It's all to further God's kingdom. We talked about during the week of prayer when it says, um, your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord, we want your kingdom to come. We want to expand your kingdom here on earth. And so we can't be ashamed of the gospel and expect to expand God's kingdom. If we're ashamed of the gospel, it's not going anywhere. It's staying with us. And that's not what we're called to do. The Great Commission tells us differently. It tells us that we are called to go and make disciples of every nation, right? Preaching to them in all the world. That's what we're to do. And so we shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel for salvation to everyone who believes. If we are ashamed of the good news of Jesus and the gospel, then why would people around us desire a relationship with God? If the relationship with God that we have is not desirable in the way we talk about it, 
Maybe you don't even talk about it at all. Maybe people don't even know that you have a relationship with God. Why would somebody else want that? If, we, if it's not desirable in our own lives, they're not going to want it for themselves. I think about um, sports fans, right? Oh, man, they are hardcore. They are all over their team, whatever the team is. Okay, my husband is a Dallas Cowboys fan, so we're going to go with that team, okay? Hats, t-shirts, coats, memorabilia, every game on the TV. He's talking about it in his sermons. Um, he's talking about it with his friends. Even if they don't like the Dallas Cowboys, he's talking about it. He knows their stats. He knows who their coach is and who their um, owner is and who this person is and that person is and how many Super Bowls they've won, which I think there's five. I think I, I got points for that. I think there's five. Um, and uh, he knows all of this stuff, who they're hiring for next year. He's passionate about it and he speaks with authority about it because he pays attention to it. He studies it. He reads up on it, right? He gets excited about his team. He's proud to wear his team's logo. Even if they haven't won a Super Bowl in a long time and they haven't really done good for a while, I'm just saying, he's still proud of his team. That's how we should be about Jesus, how we should be about God and the gospel. We should be proud and excited to talk about. You know, even if the team is a losing team, your sports fans are hardcore devoted to that team and they will tell anybody about that team, whether the other person is a, um, a I can't think of another, a, Panthers fan. We're in North Carolina. I don't know why I couldn't think of the Panthers. <laughs> He'll go and talk to a Panthers fan about the Cowboys. He doesn't care. That's how we should be about the gospel. Like sports fans. We shouldn't care. We shouldn't be ashamed. Even if our team's been losing for years, we shouldn't be ashamed, right? The gospel is not losing. We know God wins in the end. We should be excited about that. We should talk to everybody about that, even if they're not on our team yet. We should be talking to them about it. We should be getting them excited about it. We should have the knowledge about God that we can share with others. Know those stats or whatever they're called. I'm not a sports person, but for some women, you guys are, so maybe you can roll with me on this, right? And then the final part of our verse today says, to the Jews first and also to the Greek, which um, Paul's writing to the Roman, the church in Rome, and so they were Greek. Um, so... We know that God's chosen people were the Jews. He chose them first to follow him. And it was his plan to spread his message all throughout the world through the Jewish nation. But we, as we know, that, that didn't happen. Things changed and um, man-made rules came in and it became um, more of a popularity thing and a money thing. And they didn't want others to be a part of their nation. And so God sent Jesus Christ down the cross for all people. And then he called Peter and um, gave Peter this vision of a blanket coming down from the sky and all the different types of meats were on there, the unclean and the clean. And he was showing Peter that we need to get this message to everybody, the Jews and the Gentiles, the Jews and the Greeks. This message was not just for the Jews anymore. It was for all people. And so that's where Peter came from. Paul also had a passion to um, not just reach the Jews, but to reach all people as he's writing to the church in Rome right now. He wants to reach all people because that was also part of his history. Um, he, he was a Greek also. So this was part of his history. He wants to reach these people. It's the Great Commission like we talked about earlier. And scripture also tells us because the message has to get to the ends of the earth. Matthew 24, 14 says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. So the end of the world's not going to come until the message of the kingdom, the gospel, is shared to the ends of the earth. So why should we not be ashamed of the gospel? Why should we take on the power of God for the salvation of Everyone who believes in Christ, whether they're Jew or they're Greek or they're um, Hispanic or they're American or they're African or they're Chinese or they're Russian or they're, we'll just stop there because we could get carried away, right? Okay. Why? Why? Because the message has to get to the ends of the earth. We have to share so that way the end can come. We know the end is coming. I bet people... 50 years ago, 100 years ago, could never imagine how the gospel could spread. They would read this passage from over 2,000 years ago. There's no way. There's no way we could get that message. We can't translate it. 
We can't, we can't travel to those places. We can't broadcast this message. But then we have the internet. And we have people and money and missionary groups going out there. And the word is getting spread to the ends of the earth. And when it hits the ends of the earth, that's going to be the end of time. So for you personally, if you're not called to be a missionary and to actually get out there to the ends of the earth or to give, to get the message out there to the ends of the earth, the end is coming. You have loved ones, you have friends, you have co-workers that do not know Jesus. They have not believed in him and they have not gotten salvation because of him. The end is coming and we have to share the gospel for their salvation. If we don't share it, if they don't hear it, how will they know? Do not be ashamed of the gospel. Do not be scared of not knowing the right answer. Do not be embarrassed of what other people will think of you because the end is coming. And if they have not put their faith in Jesus Christ, their eternity will not be with us in heaven. So we share the gospel unashamed. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you, Lord, for the gospel. We thank you for the plan for the gospel that started before time even began here on earth. We thank you for the kingdom that you have waiting for us at the end of time. Lord, you are just so good. The, the whole thing, just we can't see the whole picture, and yet we can rejoice in knowing that there is a plan. God, I just pray that you help us to be strong in sharing your message that we don't shy away from talking about what good things you have done for us, that we no longer fear um, sharing something that we may not know the answer or sharing with someone who may look down upon us or think that we're petty or weak because we know the gospel. Because, Lord, deep down we know that is not true. It is in our weakness that you are made strong, Lord, and we thank you for that, God. Give us the strength to go out and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to all the nations, Lord. That your kingdom may come and your will will be done, Lord. You are so good to us and you deserve us to speak your name to everyone we meet. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, ladies. Well, I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye.